This video is about Iran and how Iran is controlled opposition and that they've been building up to this war with Iran for a long time. And here we have Benito Mussolini, he was an MI5 agent and he got his start in politics through being an agent and was paid £100 a, £100 a week in 1917. Now you see that the First World War and the Second World War as well as the wars with Napoleon were controlled wars and they were run by Freemasons and funded by the Rothschilds and the Third World War which is coming is the same it is a war that is controlled on both sides so the Iranians are controlled and so is the West and the deaths will be real but at the very highest level the war will be controlled by both sides because wars need to be funded and so you need a a, a funding stream and supply stream to make wars possible in the 20 in the uh, in the present century and so both war, both the West and uh, both America Israel and Iran will be funded in this next war and this next war is there to change society like World War One and World War Two they are wars that are there to change society in the Napoleonic Wars okay so we have here Benito Mussolini he was an MI5 agent now we're going to look at Khomeini and there's lots of rumours that Khomeini's father was actually a an Englishman and he worked for the he worked for an oil company British oil company in Iran and he he was given sanctuary in France and he was actually put into power by the French and British and Americans and his father's real name was actually William Richards Williamson that was his father's real name he was a British man and even in Iran they didn't accept that he was a true a true Iranian and there's lots of evidence and writers who have said that Khomeini was a British agent okay so here's his real father here his real father was born in 1872 of British parents and he worked for the Iranian oil Anglo Iranian oil company now remember that name because it then became BP and we're going to talk about that more and how Iran since about 1870 has been completely controlled by the British now what I mean by the British Empire the British Empire is actually controlled by the Rothschild family and by Freemasonry okay so that's what you've got to remember okay so lots of evidence that uh, Khomeini was a British agent and was actually half British himself and his father worked for British Petroleum what what is now British Petroleum okay now let's play a little clip of this film okay it's about 1979 we're preparing for the upcoming G7 summit in Tokyo smiling reassuringly for the cameras in their shirt sleeves in reality the mood was far less serene in Iran the situation had become untenable as international protests condemned the Shah's dictatorship the country was sinking into chaos and oil production had almost completely stopped. France was eager to be rid of an embarrassing guest they had been hosting for several months. The now this little show is full of Western propaganda. But the you can see that when the Iranian Revolution happened, the Americans, the British and the French already knew that they were going to get rid of the Shah. Now the Shah was a puppet of America okay but um, they they wanted to get rid of him because they wanted to radicalize Islam 
uh, and Iran. And why they wanted to do that was to give Israel an enemy so that in the future this war would happen. Okay, So if you want Israel to expand as a country, you need enemies. And so they constructed Iran as an enemy. And they put into power their agent Khomeini. Okay, and he was living in Paris, and they flew the him in. They flew him in after the revolution. Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini. The four heads of state came to a decision. The Shah would have to resign and leave Iran, and the aging cleric, who they knew little about, would be allowed to return to stabilize the country. And now, there you see, they, the four, decided to put Khomeini into power. And they lie about the, that they did not know much about Khomeini because in this Guardian article, okay, in this Guardian article, it says the US had extensive contact with Alatollah Khomeini before Iran revolution. So you can clearly see it contradicts that bit of news you just heard. Okay. And there's even on... On Wikipedia, there is a page dedicated to the Iranian public's belief that the British control Iran, and they do. But the thing is, is that what we know of the British Empire, as the British Empire, is actually run by Freemasons, the Rothschilds, and other banking families. That's who runs the British Empire and the British Crown. Okay? So you can see there's well-established uh, theories and research by even American writers that show that um, Khomeini was was linked to the CIA and was an agent as you see there okay now, so let's play a little bit more and preserve the economic interests of the West I heard about the Guadalupe conference I think it was there that they decided that if the shock goes and Khomeini comes, it's not such a disaster for the West. All of a sudden, the mainstream of media, they started talking about Khomeini as a big shot, as a big, actually, fighter of the Shah, which it was not. There was this great propaganda strategy. And the European media fell into the trap because that image was really too idyllic, almost like a Garden of Eden. Khomeini never failed to state that everything he did would be determined by Islam. He had always dreamt of a, uh, you know, a state in which Sharia law would rule. A very important part of it was uh, the rights of women, the family law, and everything. That was why he had been sent into exile, because he had objected to the rights of women to vote. On French television, Khomeini... Now watch this footage and notice, have a look at his hands, okay? I was asked who would rule Iran when the Shah was gone. There. So this program is part truth, part propaganda. So it shows you that the British and Americans and French actually put him into power. And that they decided that he would replace the Shah. Now you can see on his little finger he has a pinky ring. Okay, now let's have a look at the symbol, symbolism of the pinky ring. It symbolizes uh, British aristocracy and links to secret societies. And it also is uh, connected with homosexuality. Now, now the two main, the main points I want to, the two main points is that it's... Um, it's connected to the British aristocracy and secret societies, as you can see in this gentleman's guide to the pinky ring. Rings only on their pinky finger. Later in Victorian times, men and women could wear a pinky ring to indicate that they were 
weren't interested in marriage. When wedding bands for men became more popular, oftentimes they would stash their signet ring and... So, slightly before that, he says that the British had the tradition, the British aristocracy, you can see it in many paintings, they had the tradition of wearing the little finger, and it shows you that they weren't interested in marriage, okay? And their wedding ring on their pinky finger. And there's Prince Charles, he wears it on his pinky finger. The same hand. In the 20th there's lots of rumours about Prince Charles. Century, a new approach to clothing came about, and it was much less about tradition and more about... There, so the British had a ring on their pinky finger to denote their upper class ancestry and connections with secret societies. Okay, so I, I've gone through how they put Khomeini in power and how he had connections with, with the United States before the revolution, okay? So this is the Shah in his interview and in this interview, I don't know if this is the specific one, but he talks to American TV and he says that what that the Americans deposed him, even though they put him into power, because he replaced Mosaddegh. And Mosaddegh was probably also a Freemason, but he was a leader that wanted to partly nationalise Iranian oil. And the Americans and the British didn't like this, so they had him killed. And then they brought the Shah into power. And then eventually they overturned the Shah because they wanted to radicalize Iran so that it became an enemy for Israel. So that in the future Israel will fight a war and Israel will be able to expand its territory. That is what this coming war is about. Now we can see here on Iranian history how the British got involved with Iran and how it slowly the influence of the British actually became the leading dominant force in Iran okay so the British actually occupied it in in the 1920s okay so in here in this bit the relationships between the British and the Iranians you see that the here here is a quote that the Shah of Iran, the then Shah 